All right, so a little time has gone by, maybe about four or five minutes. And uh, that configuration task has made its way most mostly out there. Let's see what we got now. All right, cool. Well, I got lucky there. Uh, I wasn't quite sure if we were actually going to see those, uh, those systems there or not quite yet. And uh, it does look like they are there. So those are the five systems I went ahead and sent the configuration task out to. Um, FYI, I'm also still installing the controller. That's That action was still going before I switched over here. But um, so I remember that there that right at the beginning of the uh, video, I was mentioning that there's a setting I like to change. I'm going to go do that now. Uh, it's actually underneath this admin edit properties file. And I always go for the TRC properties. And I'm going to look for always. So this is talking about the pre-installed controller. This is actually leaning on the uh, the software controller. Um, you want this to be true. And then if I could scroll up to the top, you'll see submit. And that should be submitted. Let's just go double check it. All right, that looks good. Okay, so um, the next thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually I'm gonna go ahead and see about our users here. So we just got the one user. Um, so you'll see that we also do have the ability to integrate with LDAP. That'll be a future uh, video. Uh, for now, I'm going to actually go ahead and look at the uh, user groups. And what I'm looking for here, um, I've only got the, the admin user currently. Um, but this is, this is, again, I'm going to start working on some permissions. So again, this is kind of my own little personal kick in the door strategy. This is not really facilitating a very strong security model. Uh, this is just, again, uh, kind of demonstrating how this works. Uh, more so than demonstrating it in a very secure method. Uh, but in any case, um, the pieces that we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to go ahead and set our admin group. That looks good. The target group, default target group. That's where everybody runs into initially. Now, um, I don't know if you guys remember back on the configuration task itself. You could actually have systems roll into a different group. But for now, uh, we're going to go ahead and get these going. Um, so the way that they have this set up now is that you can actually check these as all enabled options, which I usually do. And you'll see the yes, no, so no being to the far right priorities. I usually don't mess with the priorities much. You could do that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of set just a very, very high level um, yes, no answer. So most of these factory settings will be just fine uh, for most situations. Um, so but what, I'm, what I am going to do here is I'm going to set a few of the uh, record the sessions. I'm going to turn those off for just the time being, um, just because we don't need that. Um, okay, local audit controls, allow automatic session handover. Now, the reason why I'm doing this one is just so that I can not have to be there waiting on the other system to accept it. Um, again, if you wanted to enable that, feel free. Uh, but otherwise, most of these other settings, as you can see here, these are all very highly configurable. Now, keep in mind, the direction that we're looking at this from is this is from the user group permissions, right? So this is going to be um, also addressing just kind of configurations across the target groups as well. But um, you'll see, I'm going to go and I'm actually going to double check this over at the uh, target group site as well. I'm going to go and submit that one. That looks good. We're going to go to target groups, all target groups. We're going to go and select that default target group. We're going to manage its permissions too. And we're going to make sure everything looks just the same. Um, the very much so the, the the first setting I'm always going to go check is this always automatic session handover. Uh, make sure that looks good. And I think that all looks just fine. And I'll bring you back in here in just one more uh, minute. I'm going to go test out, make sure we've got good remote control capabilities. If not, I'll uh, call out any uh, pitfalls. Okay, while you guys were away, I went ahead and did a uh, quick test just to make sure I wasn't about to uh, screw up my video here. Um, all I did now is uh, I didn't run any pitfalls or any problems whatsoever, but I just went to targets. Uh, I went to all targets. And basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to target at this endpoint one. So I'm going to check that box. I'm going to click start session over here on this left side. And I'm going to go ahead and click active. Now, also, real quick before I do that, ton of good data here, including the port that it's going to ride over. Click active. You see this little download happen. Now, this uh, download, it's, uh, it's a Java file. And uh, what it's going to do is it's going to kick off the uh, controller software. 
and let's just hope it works. Good stuff, connecting, connected, looks good. All right, so very, very high level. That's, uh, that's a successful remote control there. And uh, I don't think I've actually got the ability on this thing set up now to send control, I'll delete. Oh, I take that back, I totally do. Um, just uh, so everybody's aware, there is a fixlet if that doesn't work to enable control, I'll delete. Um, so as you can see, I'm just kind of doing just a real basic one here. There's a lot of really good uh, capabilities that kind of roll into uh, this, uh, this interface here. So you probably see quite a few of the options that we have here, uh, drawing tool, highlight tool. Like I said, we're doing this underneath an active session right now. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't, you know, lean on some of those other session capabilities. Um, but yeah, it gives you quite a, quite a good amount of uh, capability on that system. Um, you can also bring up just uh, basic system information against that. Um, could be handy also in troubleshooting efforts. Uh, you have a nice ability to chat with the end user, uh, which I don't know if it's going to show up or not, but why not give it a shot, right? Oh, there you go. So you see how that showed up. So if you're doing an active uh, active session with somebody or if you're uh, doing kind of that quarterback mode, which is the uh, assistance mode, um, could be pretty handy to have that. This is where you can invite more people. Um, so say, for example, if you run into a problem that you're uh, having trouble troubleshooting, then you can actually bring other people onto the uh, same session. Um, controller tools, um, screen captures, basic stuff there, kind of nice. You can uh, start your start and stop your recording here. Um, you also have your file transfer. Uh, you also have your clipboard transfer, so that's kind of ha handy as well. Um, and then you can also see what your response time is. So it gives you a lot of good capability here uh, to kind of begin working with. And you can also, uh, I want to call this out before I uh, finish this up. Here's your different modes. Uh, you can also roll into even a straight reboot, file transfers, whatever you need. So again, a lot of really strong capability that you're able to uh, leverage with uh, Big Fix Remote Control. And uh, again, like I said, with the type of settings that I sent out for this type of demonstration, um, this is uh, not something I'd probably go to production with. This is just... Uh, kind of getting you an idea of how everything works and how it sets up. Um, I would absolutely enforce more of a um, security focused configuration on everything before going full production, but just wanted to give everybody an idea with this video. Thank you for your time today and for uh, joining me for the remote control targets presentation. If there are any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out because we are always happy to help.